a 68 year old male who's complaining of vertigo so again we begin in the uh, proximal right common carotid artery transverse and move to the distal you can already see that we are noticing uh, irregular heterogeneous plaque along the posterior and lateral walls moving into the bifurcation you can see now the plaque is somewhat calcified still irregular this may be actually difficult to see but here's the bifurcation two vessels here so we already know that this person has has at least uh, some plaque identified already the Doppler will tell us more and there's the ICA anterior and posterior calcification plaque along the walls you can see some aliasing in this area so we're definitely going to put the Doppler in that spot just to find out if there's an increase in velocity that occurs we're moving back to the proximal common, we're getting our velocities. You can still see uh, some intimal thickening with a little calcification plaque here, proximal common. And distal and bulb at that point. And this could just be where the sonographer caught the image uh, when they froze the image here but we really should try and clean up this picture if you're taking a uh, velocity in this area you want to be parallel to the vessel walls or parallel to flow so looking at this image it doesn't appear that they're quite parallel um, this is likely not going to make that much of a difference considering there's not really a lot of in that area but for consistency sake and proper imaging you really should have all your pieces together and make sure that you're uh, imaging parallel to the walls or flow if there's plaque and here's the ECA you can see uh, there's some aliasing there we move to the ICA and already we've jumped above our threshold of 125 which is what we use. We use the SRU criteria so this is uh, already in the 50 to 69 percent range. And here we've taken what appears to be just beyond the, the plaque but I would have preferred taking maybe one or two more images of uh, or spectral samplings in here just to make sure we got the highest velocity we could but it's still a a good um, representation it's 157 over 36 and again stopping the image um, we're going to assume that where they stopped this was actually parallel to the wall and and this is not the best angle but uh, yeah we could definitely do something a little bit better with that angle we're moving distally you see the disturbed flow and we've got 127 and vertebrals appear antegrade And you can tell here that the uh, red is moving away from the probe, so we have our little negative sign there, and our negative um, is on top of the baseline, so we know that this is antegrade. Moving over to the left side. Again, we're seeing some plaque along the posterior wall. Is 
ICA, ECA, and color. Or I could be mistaken, this appears to be ECA on this. ECA, ICA. And at first glance, this doesn't look like there's a lot of uh, a lot of plaque or anything going on in the ICA that looks pretty clean. When you turn the color on, however, there's an awful lot of aliasing happening for a vessel that appears clean. And we look at the peak systolic, I'm sorry, the spectral uh, gain here, and it is 34. So that's pretty high for it to still have all of this aliasing. aliasing. So something, you should start to think that something is going on in this vessel. So moving back to the proximal. You can see some intimal thickening. There's some calcification in there. And now we move to the distal. And that does definitely does not look like a clean vessel. So there's focal calcifications. You can see the posterior shadowing from here or from here. And just irregular heterogeneous plaque. And look at the velocity now. Velocity is 141. So that's elevated for a uh, distal common carotid. You can see the disturbed flow here. 324 centimeters per second for the ECA. That is definitely elevated. And all of that aliasing we saw before. Now we're putting the pieces together and we see that the ICA is uh, well over 200 proximally increased spectral broadening and then mid drops to 70 so that's a big drop from 210 to 70 even with the distal common carotid at 141 and then to 10 and then dropping to 70 so something is is causing a uh, velocity elevation at that point proximally and then the distal uh, waveforms appear to normalize although probably a little low and even though the color fills Right at the bifurcation, you can see there's aliasing right in this area there, and the uh, velocity is up to 100 and, I'm sorry, 55, so that's pretty high for color scale, and to still get this type of aliasing. So you can see there's some shadowing, there's some calcification, so this is likely more than what it appears to be on 2D. So the bottom line is you want to investigate further and when you see um, in 2D that you can't really see a lot of plaque here, that's where you want to turn your color on and get this image. It's just enough to tell the doctor that something else is going on in this vessel. The vertebrals are anti-grade. And if you look, the ratios are actually the same. So we got 161 on the right side, we got 210 on the left, but the distal CCA was 141. What we should have done was probably taken the velocity maybe m mid CCA uh, to get away from this elevated velocity here which would give, our, give us a truer picture of what's going on uh, for a ratio. If we go back our distal CCA 
has a lot of uh, plaque. You never want to take your ratio and use or use a velocity for your ratio in an area for the CCA where there's a stenosis. You want to back out and likely take it somewhere in a cleaner section of the vessel. So unfortunately if we're taking it at distal that's 141 well the velocity is elevated at that point even though we don't have a true criteria for the CCA we like to keep it uh, you know under 125 like we would do for the ICA you don't want to use this actual velocity for your criteria maybe if we went back to proximal if we took it in a cleaner part of the vessel maybe mid Unfortunately, we didn't, they didn't take a velocity here, but if we had taken it mid and it's, so we think maybe it's under 100, and then we do a velocity ratio with the 210, we get a truer picture of what is going on and the actual uh, criteria that we would use would likely be still in the 50 to 69 percent range, but um, we wouldn't have that same velocity ratio as we did on the right side. This is a little more, a little more significant on the left than the right, but still in the 50 to 69 percent range.